So I have some new tech for Is It Merktide. I want to play one league of this today. I, um, <laughs> I'm, you know, I, I think a lot of people play a ton of Burktide, which is kind of why I don't like to play a ton of it on stream. But when I find a new piece of technology, I do like to play a league or two with the deck, um, and show off what I think is a new, interesting option. Um, uh, the card that's new for this deck is Shore Up. It, Shore Up is a card that looks super innocuous, but I think is a card that actually ends up solving a lot of problems for this archetype. A uh, Shore Up is one mana, uh, target creature you control gains hexproof till end of turn, untap it. So this can act as a just a protection spell. It can also eat as act as a removal spell. If you attack with your creature, untap it and block with it. When, so and then but the two the two main things that this card does is it lets your Murktide eat your opponent's Murktide in combat and it allows you extra protection against solitude, which is a um a really, really big deal for the Murktide deck, needing protection against Solitude. And so it is It is just like some small tech for Murktide, but I, I think that the card is very interesting. I think that it is main deckable in some metagames. I think that we are living in a metagame where it's a good main deck option. Uh, also, like, you know, with Ledger Shredder, you can connive it away sometimes if it is ever dead, but I think it's going to be live most of the time. Spell. Shore Up can function as a removal spell uh, when you are either like have, have your 8 8 Murktide is blocked by their 8 8 Murktide or um, can also just untap. You can attack with a creature, untap, and eat a creature sometimes. I haven't played, I haven't played Murktide on stream in a long time. Yeah, we can do a full deep prediction. Still work in progress when it takes the archetype. Yeah, I can take a look if you post a link in the chat. Thank you, Salmon. Yeah, assuming, I mean, assuming both Merc Tides are at the same time, but Merc Tides are like very often 8 dates, right? What about Slip Out the Back? Uh, is that like. Let me reread that card. Okay, Fury Pits, Pitch Croak, so likely playing against Scam. Put a plus one car, target creature facing out. Doesn't, never acts as a removal spell, always a protection spell. Merfolk and taxes, baby. Okay, interesting. Um, Master of the Pearl Trident is almost strictly better than Lord of Atlantis, right? Where you're never going to give your opponents, um, you're never going to give your opponents creatures plus plus one plus one island walk, which is just so deadly if they have any changelings or any merfolk of their own, incidentally. Which is, you know, not the most common, but you know, common enough that I am I'm maybe she got island against I sometimes they have a Blood Moon, we're probably fine. I'll draw another iteration too. Um yeah, I, I, if you're only if you only want to play four two mana lords, you should play four uh, Master of the Pearl Trident. I don't think splitting them for like deputy of detention and these kind of effects is that relevant. I will say this though, Merfolk players love to do anything besides play freaking Merfolk in their deck, you know what I mean? Like Lean and Arbiter and Thalia are two mana creatures and your tri and Reflector Mage are two and three mana creatures that just like don't work with your tribal synergies. Um that just don't work with your tribal synergies. And I always feel like that's kind of weird. That that being said, like they are very good cards. I think they offer a lot to the deck. Uh Ghost Quarter is awkward though in a deck playing Lord of Atlantis, uh playing Master of the Pearl Tri Trickster. I think that's a bit awkward. One card you could consider also is, of course, the two mana, two, two, that is a changeling and gives your stuff, um, like, you know, whenever it's targeted by ability, counting unless they pay a one. I think that that card is interesting. I, I, would, I, would, I would be surprised if you hadn't considered that card, I guess, but it would definitely be a card to think about if you hadn't. Mariner, yeah. I, I also generally think Reflector Mage is kind of derpy. You could play Deputy of Detention instead. You could play um, Aether Channeler instead could be good. You could, But yeah, I think I'll probably play Deputy or Aether Channeler over Reflector Mage. Yeah, maybe you just can't afford to play Glass Pool Mimics if you're playing... If you're playing Ghost Quarter, Lean, and Arbiter, you just need to play more Dual Lands. You could play like two of the blue white pain land, which is obviously like a little awkward to have to play, I guess. Uh, let's just play this pass. 
Is there anything better than that? Oh, there's there's the blue-white Merfolk land, right? Yeah, you could just play the blue-white Merfolk, reveal a Merfolk, comes into play untapped. That's way better. And you can play two of those over the Mimics just to, just to have better mana in your, you know, blue-white Ghost Quarter deck. Then your mana base is just kind of fine. Uh... I don't like Trickster so much. Obviously, like I, you know, the like the number of Merfolk is always like such a hard, such a hard split. I don't think I want to bolt the Spyro here and just let them um, go crazy. Let's go Channeler into Iteration. Is Dockhand viable? I think Dockhand's mediocre, but you could. Tr it's obviously has more synergy, like this more like you know taxes style strategy. I don't think the island would have been terrible to keep either. Uh, okay, let's go. Do another iteration. I think I, I think I want another iteration over a counterspell. I think it's pretty likely that my opponent's gonna have a removal spell in their hands, so I'm gonna keep up the shore up, keep this on top too. Yeah, your shore up is really cool with DRC because you have to attack and being able to untap block with the four power creature is pretty good. <coughs> I'm only playing two DRCs in this version. Obviously the creature splits is kind of tricky. I think you can do a few different things. Um, oh, also, you're not playing the new Merfolk Lord. The new Merf the new Merfolk Lord. I just noticed you're not that. Oh, it's here. It's here. Okay, it, never mind. You are playing it. Very cool. Okay. Why shore up is different from dive down or in hexproof thing? The untap. Yeah, it's the the untap into plus one plus one instead of plus o oh, plus three. So plus one plus one lets your mer your Merktide eat your opponent's Merktide in combat, and it also allows. Um, it you can untap and block something, which is like so. It's it's a, it's a flexible. Uh, protection spell slash removal spell. And, like, specifically, Shore Up can solve solves two problems for Murktide. One, answering opposing Murktides, which is tricky. Obviously not amazing, you know, it isn't, it isn't, it isn't high Pyroblast, but it gives you an edge against opposing Murktides, and it gives you an edge against Solitude, which are two, like, very big issues for uh, the archetype. I'm going to bring in, I think, a third Shore Up against the Rakdos Scam deck. I'm going to cut the Spell Pierces. I think I want, like, one Hearse... At least one hers, maybe two. Let's let's do two. Let's do two. Maybe kind of ragged on the draw. I think that makes sense. So Rhea, I think with eight months, appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, nice with DRC, and then you could also you know you can loot them away with Shredder if they're ever super super bad. So yeah, I, I guess just like a lot of loose thoughts here. I, I don't mind these path deck styles. Cyborg seems generally fine. Um, Curse Catcher is like a little loose. Oh no, there's there's this one. There's a one mana Merfolk. It's I, what is this card called? It's a one mana Merfolk. You can sacrifice it if a no, if a non token creature would enter if it wasn't cast exile instead. That card's really really good against Living End. I think you should have like that over Curse Catcher. Maybe play two of those cards. I'm gonna keep this. How does it answer opponent's Murktide? It makes sure it's a 9-9 and there's an 8-8. And so, like, it, it doesn't just kill it, but it is, you know, it, it's kind of the combination of all of these things. Like, your Murktide beats their Murktide in combat now. Um, you have more answers to You can better easily counter a Solitude DTB. You can block, you can attack with your creature, block with it in combat. It does, it just does a lot of things very flexibly. It, it is mostly a protection spell, but it's, a, it's like... It's like the only protection spell of its kind that's like protection spell with, you know, these upsides, which makes me very excited about it. Looks like a, a Ragavan, okay. Don't see really any reason to... Oh no, they could have, they could have spell pierce, or did I set up my spell pierces? I did, so... There's no card they hit that they can hit that punishes me for considering now. We're not considering now. When I'm cutting for sure up. I mean, Murktide now has a lot of flex spots. <laughs> you know what I mean? There are a lot of... Uh, <laughs> a lot of different options for the archetype. Um, it's got what Ragavan Mystery card. I think I'm probably somewhat in the clear. Just play Channeler. Consider I need to find a land or artifact in two looks, which is pretty likely. Although oh, Shizo could let them fear the Ragavan. Yeah, but there's a lot of flex spots in Merktide. There didn't really used to be before Shredder got printed, so I, I do think that 
Shredder has ended up being a pretty positive addition to the format. Or, you know, allowing Merktide to have, like, a lot of flexible, interesting ways to build it instead of being relatively straightforward. Uh, Graveyard that. You have Delirium now. Graveyard that. I have the Hearse in hand already. One, two. Okay. Let's go. If they have an Undying effect as a last card, this is really bad. I don't think I'm supposed to play around it. I can turn this into 1-1 one, one again. I think that's fine. Maybe, maybe making the 7th power is better because I just attacked this twice, but I also have the charm just to make this delirious again immediately. And this makes it immune to, like, Bolt plus Fury. It's kind of narrow. Did them trying anything with the dragon that draws when targeted? No, maybe one day, though. I really, like, it just doesn't work with Ground Rift, because Ground Rift can't target a flying creature, so I got, I got kind of disappointed by that, I guess. Okay, let's keep this. Yeah, that's Lucy's chair. Now, we bought that chair for Athena, but she would just refuse to sit in it, but she's, like, a little too big for it. Lucy is, like, perfect size. This is all I ever wanted, just dogs hanging out during the stream. <laughs> so I used to have that with Athena, but Athena like Athena like just waits for me to get off work now. You saw that the other day on on Friday when I when I streamed kind of late. Uh, Athena's like, "Hey, you're supposed to be off work by now." <laughs> She's like, "People, you, you can see if you're a bit closer to her. She definitely has like the the face and the like body type, but she has like the fur of a different dog." <laughs> well, Lucy replaced Ajani on the mountainside. I've been wanting to like give the Ajani on the the opening screen mountainside a green eye from like <laughs> like he has in the uh, the new uh, Celester. And we've lost the dogs. <laughs> and we've lost the dogs. I think that Murktide is probably a little bit favored against Breach, but it's probably an a awfully close matchup. Ugh, I haven't shredded in a long time. Uh, yeah, the, the Dimulich deck is sadly still bugged. Um, I tested it this morning. No idea when they're going to fix it. Hope that they do. What makes Shrub stand out over their cards like Busy and Skim? Uh, so untapping, obviously, like, the difference is right. It untaps the card and gives it plus one, plus one. So um, this me means you're able to use it sometimes as a removal spell and sometimes as a combat trick to kill your opponent's Merc Tides or kill your opponent's Channeler. When they have a 3-3 Channeler, you have a 3-3 Channeler. Um, and it's just, like, in, in my opinion... Well, I guess, I guess I should say, honestly, like, in my opinion that... Uh, um, it's, it's, I think it's very likely the case that effects like Mizium Skin or Dress Down are underplayed at Murktide because, uh, they're just, like, such a clean answer to the Solitude's effects. Um, and I think that, like, that kind of, that kind of card probably could be, could have been played this whole time. And, you know, it's generally under-tested is kind of my, kind of my suspicion. Um, that being, that being said, uh... <laughs> That being said, uh, this is like a much better version than any of the other cards versions we've ever seen before. And I know it just looks like an innocuous combat trick, but it's like it is much more flexible than anything else we've seen. Um, I guess I don't really need to bolt the token. What if I bolt them? They go to 12, 7 power. Yeah, it doesn't really change the clock, so I'll uh I'll bolt here, loot away the ragged man. And another thing, too, it's like, obviously, it, this effect is a little bit less stated since I am, you know, streaming and showing off the tech or whatever, but um, people with modern do not play around combat tricks, <laughs> especially out of Merktide. Or uh, if you, like, you know, if you take this to your RCQ this weekend, um, you are not, you are not going to have opponents that are going to just play around uh, uh, Shore Up, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, not going to happen. 
Could have spell pierced that. They can still cast Emery even if uh, even if that resolves. So I don't think I need to do that. Spell pierce doesn't look like it's super live at the moment. I think I want to discard the Stevens though. And then I think I want to save the heat for my turn to trigger connive. Okay, so go heat Emery. Bobble. Spell Pierce to not die to the combo is maybe gonna be good. So yeah, maybe just discard consider. Burk type of spell pierce up will be pretty good here. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree that like generally combat tricks aren't good enough. But th this one is like it, it feels like to be a big step up from what we've seen in the past. The untap on it's really exciting, and I think you're gonna get a lot of people. In in addition to like the protection spell being like pretty attractive in this archetype, just regardless. I know they have iterations. So I don't think I'm supposed to spell pierce that. Dude, Ledger Shredder is just so nuts. Does the situation really come up that often? I mean, the situation that your opponent targets, um... <laughs> the situation that your opponent targets, uh... I guess now that I don't want them to connive very much, I'll just kill the Emery here. That your opponent targets your creature with removal comes up constantly in Murktide. And Murktide's one of, one of Murktide's biggest weaknesses in the format is Solitude. And the fact that this deck just gets to be, um relatively relatively resilient to solitude or more resilient to solitude than it has been because we're playing shore up is very exciting to me and then it has extra added value of being able to untap eat a opposing creature in combat and occasionally the extra damage will be uh particularly relevant that being said we are just testing it here you know we are, we're just play testing right now but I will also say this, when Merc when Ledger Shredder got printed, I was like the first person playing Ledger Shredder on Twitch at least, I feel. And um, there was a lot of spikes. Ledger Shredder seems so bad. See, you know, there like the like the amount of like doubt for Shredder was just so overwhelming. Okay, this is a, this was a punt by them. If I hit a spell they die, I think. Or well, maybe they just, they just have to try to find hope I find a spell or a land in they can Aether Spell Bomb. Yeah, maybe that's better. Although now I can force them to trade and then they're still dying to the Shredder. Yeah, I, I know I know Shore Up is not Shredder. I know Shore Up is not Shredder. Obviously it's not. I'm not saying that it is. But what I am saying is <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I, I am saying is I feel like a lot of times when evaluating new cards, players have an incredible bias against them. They have an incredible bias, um, thinking that they're these card that new cards are worse than they actually are. If that makes sense, I, I I'm not declaring Sh Shrub to be as good a upgrade to Shredder, but I I am saying give it a chance. I'm asking y'all to give it a chance. I guess I have to learn how to sideboard in this matchup. It's going to be somewhat common. I do think it's, this is not a great matchup for the Shore Up. Although it is, it is good against their Aether Spell Bomb. It is actually good against their Aether Spell Bomb. Hmm. So I think I want at least the first dress down. Probably, probably two. Maybe three. <laughs> Maybe three. Um, I'm pretty down to trim a Ragavan on the draw. Um, the first Hearse is at least good. Probably made it down to one Shore Up. Maybe I'm just trimming right two Ragavans on the draw. First Dispute seems pretty good. Charm seems pretty good. They have played a well low one drops. Let's do this. Do you see a Twitter DM about the founding Sea Truth bug ticket for Moto? Uh, I, I didn't see it. Um, you can maybe summarize for me or is something that needs to be said in private. The problem with Snapcaster in this deck is just, just very expensive for the for the deck. It's like a minimum three mana spell, sometimes four mana spell, and it's just it's just I think a little too high on the curve. Uh, I'm not gonna mulligan this, or maybe playing Murktide soon. We're we're playing Murktide right now, <laughs> right now.
Lightning Bolt at the ready. Don't love holding up the counter spell here. I, I think it's unlikely I'll get to counter something. I would counter a Mistress Bobble if they played it, actually. <laughs> um, I think it could have been good to iteration here to get somewhat close. I do think this turn I'm going to play Shredder and then heat the token end of turn. Do I still like the creativity deck I posted on Twitter? The Pioneer one, I'm assuming. I, I haven't played that deck since I tweeted it. Um, I haven't been playing much Pioneer at all. I know that Everos still likes that deck a lot. Um, he was the streamer that I got a lot of the tech from that list for, from. and um, I, I can't imagine that the deck went from being a strategy that I like really liked in the format to a strategy that I don't like anymore. Sorry, Mr. Duck Tech, thank you, thank you. Domain Zoo. I've been working on Domain Zoo as well. Um, I think there's a lot of different directions to go with it. One thing that we, we played against a Domain Zoo variant recently that was pretty interesting, that was playing, um, that was playing, so, so there's, 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 there's two of the same, wait, they're plus to fairy? They have ending. There's two of the same kind of card that, um, um, <laughs> exist for, for this deck. It's, it's one mana, it's Might of Allura, and then I don't know what the other one is, but they, they both do the same thing, which is, hold on. Which is uh, give a creature plus one plus one where one, or or plus x plus x where x is the number of uh, domain types you have. So I don't I don't I didn't find a fetch land for delirium. So I guess I'm just going to dash hit them pass. If they if they deal with my ragavan next turn I have delirium. Um, and so I think that that card's kind of interesting in the domain shell where you can be a bit more aggressive. And there's also, there, there's a two mana creature with power equal to your domain, three toughness and trample. And the trample is really big with the, the being able to play eight copies of Might of Allura. And you can call the deck Eight Might and uh, that's a really good deck name. Okay, so I think we're dying here. I guess, looks like the last card is Breach. Yeah, they'll be, they'll be able to win the game here. Bummer. Um, and so I, I've been working on that build. It's it's very tricky to balance everything. And I, I do want to note that this this version that you have here is different. This is like going to be like the bigger version with Cascade Spells, Blood Braid Elf, um, and trying to be like a little bit slower and grindier instead, which I think is fine. I just want to make um, the note that I think that they're going to be kind of two distinct versions. Okay, I want, the, I want more Ragavans on the play. Full four Ragavan on the play. Can probably trim a dress down on the play. Hearse is a bit, a bit worse against like Needle, worse against Teferi. Can probably trim a Consider for another Dispute or Spell Pierce. Spell Pierce might be a little, I mean, Dispute hits uh, Shredder, which is nice, and Emery. Could trim a Merc Tide too, but they brought in all their Graver hit. Let's do this. Um, so I, I, one thing I don't love is Helix. Obviously the life gain is somewhat nice, but I feel like Helix feels like the weakest card in the deck every time I try to build this. I think I would play no more than one Kroxa, probably zero Kroxa. I, yeah, I'd be maybe interested in doing something like one Kroxa, zero Helix, three main deck to Fairy Time Raveler in a list like this. Okay, let's keep this. Um, Ob might be a little slow for the burn matchup, but that's what if that's what you want, then that's still fine. I like the charm. I like the forces. Cyber looks generally pretty good. You could play like one more force of vigor if hammer time is super popular, which it kind of has been lately. Okay, let's consider graveyard pass. Shadow Spear, not too scary. I think I get into the Steve Vince here. Graveyard that. Merktide's not too bad. 
Let's iteration this turn. I'm a little scared of them having to ferry for the Murktide if I jam it here. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I want to go hand, bottom, exile. Still missing a creature or artifact in the yard for Delirium. Bubble exiled for opponent. Bubbles themselves. Flooded strands, cracking, shocking. Could have disputes, could have bolts. So we draw. So I could maybe just trade iteration for dispute here. Let's 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 just let's let's jab the Murktide. Let's go jam Murktide. Counterspell dispute if they have it. If they have bolt up, it doesn't do anything. And then can untap with iteration. Yeah, it looks like it's bolt then. Maybe spell pierce. Inscribe tablet. I, yeah, what is inscribe tablet? I don't think I've read this one. But oh yeah, this one. Land from among them in your hand. Bottom rest of the library in your order. Um, that card's really interesting. I don't know, that, that's that's the kind of, like, I, I'm not, like, thinking of anything immediately that I would be, like, wanting to use that card in. And so it would be the kind of card that, like, you keep in your memory and then maybe it gets there eventually. Flusterstorm, I see. Maybe it gets there eventually, but at, at least at the time of making this comment, I don't see an obvious application for that card. So I guess just Heat, Murktide Counterspell seems to be pretty good. Got six cards in their hand. I kind of do too, huh? <laughs> guess not quite. Don't do this to me again. Don't Teferi with Counterspell up again. Sixty cards, by the way. <laughs> Gross. Okay, not the end of the game. Five cards in hand. All right, so I cast another five, five Merc Tide. Eggs. Guess a lot of cards aren't that good against a fairy, though, huh? Three cards, opponent's hands. Dive down better than shore up in this spot. How? I mean, they're just getting to fairy either way, right? They drew their oracle, so I mean, they can't like literally win if they. Oh, they can just, they can maybe bounce the Oracle with a Teferi. They have a lot of mana. We'll see, we'll see. Sideways, 11 months. Thank you, thank you. Big draw step. Cycle dress down. Not great. <laughs> Immediately Saw goes. All right, probably the last turn, Ragavan will be good. Um, I guess there's a good chance it doesn't connect. <laughs> okay, sure up bad against uh, stupid Teferi, but also any like spell pierce, whatever, is like exactly as bad here, I guess. Probably do, I mean, Merc Tiding into the Teferi is so bad. We just have nothing bad options. How many iterations do we have left? Still two. <laughs> Scalding Tarn. I mean, Lenny Bolts. 
I do cast the Murktide last turn to be able to bolt this. 4-4 four, four Murktide, which is not a huge, but something. We maybe get to like <laughs> untap the Murktide, eat something in combat this turn this game. Dispute likely somewhat dead, although if they if they make a saga token, cast like Teferi or Iteration, Shredder, we can maybe get something. But it also maybe gets Aether Spell Bomb here, we get to shore up. Winning this game would be like super sick. Alright. We've cast it. <laughs> Database is the fetchable, maybe second second Yog main. Okay, we mostly get the chat, I'll take a look. I predict cleric tribal. <laughs> I predict cleric tribal with uh the the suggestion. Mana base needs another fetchable. Maybe a second Yog main. Dashed Ragavan. I have to block a construct here so I can block one next turn because this is only I only have a four four Murktide. It's getting very relevant plus one plus one from Shore Up. And thank you, Ragavan. I didn't want that scolding turn at all. I didn't want that scolding turn at all. If you post a link in the chat, wild. I can actually copy paste from the uh, notification. Notifications over here. Mm, my kingdom for a shore up, huh? So they dash Ragavan, I get to connive. Looking for like dress down. Here I have to chump lock the constructs. I guess uh, Arc Regis Charm would have been pretty good too. I'll take a drill step, I'll, I'll chip block. Oh, humans, pyre humans, okay. Have Odawara? Yeah, okay. Bummer. Bummer. I will say, you know, shore up <laughs> does help you against cards like that. Oh, such a tough game. Like, the, the second Teferi with the second one mana blue counter spell is obviously why we lost that game. Um. I do like playing the Safi combo too, although... Wait, do you not have... Oh, Yogmoth is your only sack outlet, okay. So one thing you could do is you could play Ranger Captain and you could play Carrion Feeder. So you could play like a, you could play instead of like General Kudro, you could play one Ranger Captain or play a couple Ranger Captains and play one Carrion Feeder as another sack outlet for your Safi combo. But I would, I would, if you if you play a second Yogmoth, I would definitely like the Hapatra. You don't have to play the Hapatra, but it, it could maybe at the very least be in the sideboard. Um, you know, you know personally, as as far as like Hapatra and Yogmoth goes, I'm honestly surprised that like the Yogmoth decks like sometimes not don't play a single copy. It's like the best card in the mirror. It's the best card in, in like any creature decks, creature matchups. I would I I think I would probably like usually main deck the first copy, but. Um. Like the fact that a lot, like most lists just play zero copies main or side, I think is uh, not something I agree with. Um, Cyber looks really good. <laughs> I'm like on the sideboard. One hat patcher, one ranger captain, for series is great. Yeah, yeah, and so like these are like kind of all options for the deck if that makes sense like i'm not like saying that any of these suggestions are 100 percent the way to go but you got to do some play testing and tweaking and tuning but this looks pretty cool looks pretty fun i like to say where you could maybe play third meddling mage of the scheming fans maybe vincer's a little slow with no flicker effects but i obviously have a soft spot for vincer um i feel like i'm walking into spell pierce really hard if i iteration here so yeah, maybe I'm just going to go consider and maybe just play a 4-4 four, four Merktide or 5-5. Five, five. I think this uses my mana really well, and when I have um, two iterations of Merktide in hand, I think this is fine. Dodges Bolt. Eats Channeler if they get Delirium. Dodges Spell Pierce. 
Oh, I missed that there was two mage main. Okay, then that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, and if you do play the, if you do play those more black cards, I, I do think cutting. I think cutting two canopies, playing, playing one more fetchable, a black source, and then two more fetch lands seems fine. Tutor says it's useless. I love I love tutors. Um, I will say that I I disagree. I'm a, I'm a big believer in Hippotra. I I've also played tons and tons of Yawgmoth, and I. Uh, I, I mean, useless also like really surprises me when I, I I certainly feel like that card is at least like phenomenal in the mirror. Although maybe you know, maybe unnecessary. <laughs> Tutors also just like Winota and Yogg. Well, we, I think we agree there. <laughs> I think we agree there. It's very good against creature decks, dog water against everything else. Yeah, yeah, which is why, like, if you think that, like, I think, like, the first copy in the sideboard seems like, a, like, a, it's a very good sideboard option. Like, if you have any other, like, sideboard cards for creature decks, I don't know that it's going to be better than Apatra. But I, I also know that like, the tutors, like, does, uh, to some extent, go back and forth on the Apatra, right? It's not like he's literally never played it, right? Okay, interesting. I could obviously just Odawara, but they are going to be able to bounce a, a lot of the time too. I think I could take a hit. Um, I need to make sure that my Murktide is not going to be just like I, I can play this Murktide, make this one seven seven, but. I think it's better to hold up the counter spell so they can both be. This one can be seven seven. This one can be eight eight. Aryak champion was what I thought. Our champion's fine for sure. The last song I played in this one year anniversary streaming. Played the decklist from a year ago. I see. I see. I mean, I, I've seen him play in the past, but time is kind of convoluted for sure. But also again, he plays the deck way more than me. Like we can have, we can have a difference of opinion, and you know, you guys can form your own opinions. But I might be wrong. <laughs> I might be wrong. Okay, let me look at my top card. It's gonna really impact my decisions here. If it's like counterspell or bolts, you know, yeah, counterspell makes me have a pretty easy turn. Although I do kind of suspect my opponent still has spell peers. Imagine if we had Shore up though, that would be Xaxes. <laughs> do you think Twiddlestorm decks are playable? Yeah, yeah. Oh no, they don't have a spell pierce because they counterspelled my they counterspelled my counterspell. They would have spell pierced. Also, they can't tap this for mana anymore, notably. They could they could have they could have drawn those the spell pierce though. We're gonna change to the short podcast. We actually made that joke on the the dive down this last week. Yeah, I think that's like reasonable reasoning, Vayel. Yeah, that's definitely true. People will oftentimes be kind of hyperbolic talking about um, <laughs> people's opinions on cards. So if they spell Pierce, we win. I don't think they have any outs. I hate the Fire Island. I basically never play it. <laughs> it's obviously like fine to play, but I am uh, not a fan. Okay, so we get to bring in three hearse. Um, on the draw, I probably want the fourth heat. I think that Dispute is pretty good. I, I usually just cut the pierces and play only Disputes, although Spell Pierce is pretty good against opposing hearses. Um... On the draw, I feel like I can cut two Ragabans somewhat easily. Trim a Bobble or two, because I'm cutting. I only have I only have a uh, two Channelers, and I'm bringing in three Hers. Fourth Consider, fourth Counterspell. Probably play fourth Counterspell on the player with the fourth Heat. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I play I play eight Fetches, one Odawara, three Island, four Canal, three Stimbins. 
I'm, I can't remember. It's been a long time since I played a ton of Murktai. This is the mana base I've liked. I've liked for a long time. Um, I think I think a lot of times they play just seven fetch lands, right? Okay, I'm gonna heat on turn one instead of bolt so that I can bolt a opposing shredder on turn two. Why am I not playing Fluster in the sideboard? Um, I have extra copies of Spell Pierce instead. Okay, I'm gonna bolt this turn. Although with them being on one land, if they have a Spell Pierce, I want them to tap out on their turn, I think. Let's just beat that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm playing Spell Pierce instead. I, I feel like the ability to counter Chalice of the Void and Teferi and Ren and Six is a bit more important to me than the extra Fluster Storms. So I don't have land number three. They found land. I think I should just jam the Hearse. I think it, it's, you know maybe they have a Spell Pierce, right? But Spell Pierce also, of course, sometimes gets sighted out. Fluster against Living End. Yeah, yeah I mean, I have a Spell Pierce counter spell dispute also against Living End. But I, I, understand, I understand why it's in the sideboard. But, you know, it, it, isn't, isn't it just a conversation of, like, am I trying to hedge against, like, only living in? Or do I want to also be able to, like, bring Spell Pierce in against the Teferi and Chalice decks? Yeah, that's a good point. They didn't pierce the bolts. So, obviously, being the player with the Hearse is really, really enviable in these kind of spots. I think I'm probably down to still wait turn. Obviously, just dying to draw my third land. Wait till attack. I mean, if they don't attack, I'm happy. I think I kind of like disputing. Since, like, I have a bunch of one mana tricks already, and dispute's not going to scale super well into the late game. Yeah, I'm gonna hurst the main phase again. Just like, if they choose not to attack to play around Ragavan, I'm 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 happy with that. Although they they can play a three three Merktide if they have it. You don't think the sixteen months appreciate you? Yeah, they do they do go for the three three Merktide, which is fine. I'm so desperate to draw land, but. The third shore, I'm like, yeah, no, no, no. Okay, hopefully they don't have a bolt. He doesn't work, at least. And if they do kill this, then we can play a Merktide next turn. It's not that big a deal. They seem like they don't have it. Uh, they do have an Unholy Heat if they're making this attack. Which I am going to play around. So has heat mystery card. I think they could be bluffing, but people just also like never bluff. So now I have a bolt for the Merc Tide. I think I'm just gonna chill. We have successfully untapped, so I'm feeling very good. So now we get to block here. Lightning bolt this. Oh my gosh, I meant to bolt the Murktide. I meant to bolt the Murktide. What am I doing? Sorry, I, I meant to bolt the Murktide. <laughs> Just missed. We're still like super ahead, but... I just missed. <laughs> Fuck. Do you see a better target? No, no, I don't think so. It's because it, it's like cursing them gets a little awkward if... Um, Hersing and they gets a little awkward if I uh, don't want to grow their Merc Tide, which I don't really want to do, obviously. Okay, I think it's time, though, to do the uh, Shore Up trick. Or try to. Let me see what my top card is. If it's a land, I can cast this Consider. It is a land. I can cast the Consider. Discard Counterspell. So, probably good enough to draw, though. <laughs> I 
All right, good enough to dispute. Might have lethal on the crack back. Can go down to four, not that the bolt. Gonna hearse two lands for my yard. Grave at this. I guess I'll hearse land. Yeah, this will land land. No land artifact. Missed that there was also a bobble. Draw for turn is uh, <laughs> the third hearse. Okay. So maybe I'm just gonna cast Murktide, see if it resolves. They have one card in their hand. Does resolve. What do I lose to? Not much. Odawara, Odawara Benno. Just think if I want to attack with this. I don't think I need to. I don't think it would be bad though. Okay, they just concede. <laughs> What card forced them to ban Astrolabe? What deck was broken? It was it was in like the four color, you know, four or five color like Omnath value piles, where it, it made their mana perfect and made mana perfect. Not only made you resistant to Blood Moon, but it made your mana so good you could play Blood Moon in your five four and five color decks, um, which was disgusting. And the card is also like absurdly good with Yorion, where kind of like abundant growth. It is um, it gives you inevitability. Uh, giving you card advantage with the the Yorion in the late game. Also, it lets you have Ice Fang have have Death Touch on turn two, which is like really really sick. Probably supposed to upkeep this bubble. Yeah, yeah, Ab Abundant Growth does a lot of the same things. Astrolabe is definitely better, but it is kind of like a it's 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 better than Abundant Growth. You can fetch any any color of basic castle turn one. It makes any of your lands filter. Turns on ice, ice wing death touch. Is this another Murktide matchup? I, you're supposed to draw a land, huh? <laughs> Channeler bubble consider. You're legally, legally required to be able to draw a land after that. You have a bubble? Gross. Maybe they discard a spell. They never discard a spell here, though, right? Was an Astrolabe ban before Omnath was released? Uh, I may be mis mixing up my timeline, but I I believe I remember there being a Field of the Dead Uro Omnath uh, Astrolabe deck. Man, I blame Shore up for not drawing a second land. Um, I, 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 I my memory could be I could be misremembering, but I believe at one point there was a maybe maybe Omnath Omnath and Uro definitely coexisted. Omnath and Uro with Field of the Dead definitely coexisted. I believe they also got to play Astrolabe. It was not. It was not like a super long time, but I believe that that was a thing. Okay, so I want all four ragavans on the play. Do they go on? The, let's just let's try the third. Uh, their shore up disputes hearses. Fourth counter spell on the play. Uh, we can try maybe three bobbles on the play because I'm bringing in so many hearses. Maybe two is still too good. Yeah. Pierce is cuttable. Maybe I'm cutting Chandler's. Could also go down a removal spell to play. It's kind of a lot though. I'm already at seven. Let's try this. The deck goes Snoko with Oko Uro value. I mean that that deck also existed. There's like a lot of different. A lot of different versions. <laughs> a lot of ways to uh, break the format. Is untap relevant? Yeah, it's, it's relevant. You can use it as a combat trick, but it also makes your Murktide bigger than their Murktides if they're both 8-8, eight, eight, which is really big in the matchup. I don't think that Shore Up, you know, is going to be a mandatory card that you main deck in Murktide. I don't think it goes in every metagame, but I think it's like a good techie card. Makes you better against Solitude. I think, I think it makes you better in the mirror also. Charm bad versus Pierce in dispute. I yeah, but Charm is I think generally like good in the matchup. 
I don't know, everybody's... And the, that's the thing with the Murktide Mirror is, like... There's, like, almost no bad cards. There's almost there's almost nothing that you're uh, upset to be playing. And uh, I, 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 I think I generally like to have a couple charms, but you could cut it, I guess. I think it shines. These kind of games, these draw-go games... Why a shrub over a card like Dive Down? Um, well, because of the differences of the two cards. Un untapping is huge. I don't. I think the, the ability to like untap and eat a creature in combat is a really big upside to a card like Dive Down. But here, here's also the thing too. Here's like the like the, the something that is like a little understated with me playing this card uh, shore up in the deck is that I I feel like these kind of protection spells in Murktide could have should have been tested played and they're just like it's just underexplored but um but again giving you i guess i guess dive down does actually make the eight eights you it beats the combat huh but um again i, I just gen generally feel like this is an underexplored uh card in the on the archetype i think that hedging against solitude is a, is a big part to <laughs> to uh <laughs> or it is a big game and uh I think that shore up is not only, not only like this effect, but it's the best version of this effect we've ever seen. If that makes sense. Okay, there's a good chance that this just gets one mana countered. Okay, I'll love that it didn't. Love that it didn't. Cutting one Murktide is an okay thing. I usually hate cutting a Murktide in the mirror. Just like, the matchup is just all about it. They exile Lightning Bolts. But again, it's just, you know. Every, everybody has like different cyber plans in the mirror. It's just so tricky. They do bolt me, which is totally fine. If they have a dispute, they can answer my iteration potentially. Probably fine. I can just go land hold up charm after that if they do. If they have spell pierce, I'll pay. Okay. Kind of surprised they're tanking on that dispute. Definitely uh, never never wanting to play just a 6 6 Murktide here against the Unholy Heat deck. It's got six cards in their hand. Gonna jam the Archmage's Charm. It's counter gets countered. <laughs> Resolved so fast. Okay. Oh man, a, a land. If this work title was an untapped land, just getting to go triple two drop this turn cycle would be great. Uh, that being said, I'm, I'm happy enough to just jam this hearse and probably fight over it if they counter back. Yeah, I think with my hand being so mana intensive, countering back if they go for a counter makes sense. They don't go for a counter, I will. Just start hearsing them. Hearse is just such an incredible edge in the mirror. It'll be. I don't have delirium. If they do Murktide, it's gonna be a six six. Can maybe set up for them to like counter a Murktide and then I get delirium. Oh, they have a braid. Okay, I will. Yeah, I think I should counter the braid. There's a good chance this like lo I lose this counter fight though. But if, but also if they do kill my hearse, then. I have Delirium. Oh, wow, that just resolved. They have two Abrades? Okay, Murktide is now a 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, one, two... Yeah, I can make mine at 8-8s. So I think just 8-8 eight, eight Murktide with Counterspell plus 1 mana. Burn spell up is fine. Could be better. Why are they, like, li literally, why are they bolting Murktide here? They don't have Delirium. Can't even Rending Volley it. Oh, they have, Mur they have a second Murktide. Maybe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hearse their Bobble Strand on their upkeep to play around it a little bit. I think we could also mentally think that they have a Heat. Yeah, and before shore up, huh? <laughs> I 
I, I do think like um, another Merc Titan is somewhat likely. So just stopping them from going, you know, delve, put one counter on this one. It's pretty good. Although I could, uh, I could maybe like bolt and then rehearse my own bolt or something. That could be a way for me to get around that. But with two more Merc Tides in my hand, I, I also don't really want to have to like hearse my own graveyard. How is Shore Up been? I think it's been fine. It's been like, you know, like Shore Up is not, I think, going to be a new staple of the deck like Ledger Shredder. I do think that it is a interesting techie card that uh, mostly makes you better against Solitude, but has like a lot of flexibility. And so for, for like a techie, interesting card like this to have as much flexibility as it does, I think is very interesting. I think I'm just attacking, playing Ragavan, holding up Counterspell, Bolts. Uh, Home with Steve, thank you for the eight months. Uh, the new dog is adjusting well, she's, uh, she's fitting right in, she's fitting right in. She's very good. So I do, I do still suspect my opponent of having a copy of Unholy Heat. So I could get like really tricky. No, it's sorry, I, I should have hearsed myself into turn. I cause I could just Merc Tide to grow this Merc Tide, and then I can, and then I can exile this counter spell with this to make this um, eleven power to beat a Heat plus block. How much do you enjoy Merc Tide Mirror versus Four Color Mirror? Uh, I hate for I hate matchups like Four Color Mirrors. To be honest, I. I um the the kind of like battle cruiser magic just like slam your 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 three to five mana <laughs> uh, two for one haymakers fire design cards into each other until somebody wins. I those kind of matchups are not not usually that fun for me. Not that not that it's like that reductive or whatever, but you know what I mean. Um Let's see what they connive away. Why not counter that or try? I mean, this this Ledger Shredder just doesn't do anything. I mean, it's a chump blocker, but they still have two mana up. And what is Fire Design? So Fire Design it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Uh, usually, what I like to think of when I think of Fire Design is I think of the kind of 2019-2020 era uh, of like super super duper push cards like. <laughs> Omnath is definitely from that era. It's a very time raveler. Oko, Uro. Um, every card from Throat of Eldraine. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the list the, the list is really long. Uh, the, the acronym stands for fun, inviting, replayable, and exciting. But for and for, for the most part, I, I, I like to think of it as like that kind of super duper push 2019, 2020 era of cards. VG Land, thank you for the seven months. Appreciate you. Do you find the Merc Tide Mirror is not the same way? Uh, I no, I don't find that the Merc Tide Mirror is similar at all to like the four color Omnath Mirror. Okay, so I have six, seven, plus five. So not enough to double Merc Tide here. So I guess I should just play one. Oh no! Sorry, this is a this is a really bad bobble. I should have wait, waited for them to chump block. They discard a bobble. I don't I don't think there's anything I could see on top to really change my line. Maybe there is. Oh yeah, that is. Yeah, this makes me crew the hearse and attack. I would say the balanced fire design of recent set allows you to do what I do before saving this area when a couple standards serve. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I've been saying this a lot. Like, I, I absolutely agree. Uh, design for standard sets over the last, um, the last, I, yeah, I think, I think 2021, 2022 magic design has been really good. I'm, I, I think that, I think that people <laughs> are still suffering the whiplash from just like every standard set being broken and, um, all of that kind of exacerbated by Modern Horizons 1, which had a lot of you know problems as well. 
But uh, I, I think the design for the last two years has been really good. I think that they've learned a lot of lessons, and I really like to. I like the degree that standard sets are impacting modern now too. Okay, going to game three. So I'm gonna draw. I think I'm going down two monkeys. Bring a channeler back in, a heat back in. Seems fine. Oh, maybe a counter spell on the draw also. Full eight one mana removal spells to hedge against Dragon on the play. I think that also makes sense. Is Shore Up really worth testing? I think so. I think so. I think the card does a lot. And okay, I, so this is this is kind of the main point. This is not I'm not just playing Shore Up because there's never been a card like this in the past. I am I am of the opinion that cards like Dive Down, these protection spells in Murktide have been worth considering for a long time as a extra way to hedge against Solitude specifically, but for a deck that's all about putting this giant flyer into play, protecting it from removal is uh, very is, is very, very interesting to me. And um, I have to keep this, I think. Um and uh, I think that these kind of effects have been playable, reasonable to consider the entire time. That being said, Shore Up, not only is that the case, not only is that the case, Shore Up is the best version of this card we have ever seen. Shore Up is, is much better than Dive Down. It's much better than any one mana creature gains hexproof type effect um, that exists because of the untap. The untap, you know, makes it a much more flexible combat trick. It's very, very interesting to me. And so you see this a lot of the times where, like, you know, this kind of card is already worth considering and you just get a much better version. It's just very exciting to me. I do think it's always just going to be, like, a somewhat techie card, a card that you can surprise people with, a card that is particularly good if Solitude is super popular, but... Um, it, it also helps you against Odawara, helps you against Aether Spellbomb. Um... <laughs> Cards that cards that are usually you know somewhat tricky to deal with. I'm playing two shore up in the main, one on the side, and just kind of you know messing with some of the flex spots for it. One of my uploading Jun Saga again, put YouTube. Uh, the, I have an editor that handles all the the upload schedule. I haven't. Uh, I assume it's on the queue. I'll, I'll be playing more too, and if they if uh, he missed that one, I'll get it later. Oh, I thought my opponent was missing their third lane drop. I think I'm fine to just pass here. I, I kind of want to be able to play Iteration next turn with a Dispute Up, but I think with a lot of lands, just passing usually favors you. Getting scared of an Opposing Murktide, though. Oh, it's already up. Awesome. So my opponent um, likely has Dispute or Flusterstorm. I'm likely to have Spell Pierce. I'd really seriously consider that there. I probably still have to jam. Right, maybe they do have a Spell Pierce. They almost definitely have a one mana counter spell. Let me, let me just pass with the Charm up. They're, they missed their land drop, so... Blanking that mana is pretty nice. I have, I have the Charm up to like draw two end of turn if I want. Okay. How long left do you have? Uh, I don't know. A little while. Okay, well, I'll close the door. Okay. Spike, I'm having trouble with the theory of just lose the cyborg cards. I mean, just lose the cyborg cards is is not like actually an opinion of mine all the time. It's an opinion of mine when cyborg cards are incredibly unpopular and they're not in the metagame and you don't need to like warp your deck to play around them. Some decks can play around cyborg cards, like the mono red deck I just played is playing three codes next return because Sanctify Vec is really popular. I, I thought I'd yield until end of turn. I was gonna get a steam vents there. But like it's also, you know, when I when I play a ton of Bant Collected Company, because this deck I think is really good, and I don't see Torpor Hushbringer almost at all, and my comments are just, you know, constant, <laughs> constant spike. How do you beat how do you beat Torporb? How do you beat Torporb? Uh, and Torpor was not a big enough part of the metagame to um, to want to side against it, then <laughs> then want to to want to side against it. Then I, I don't recommend warping your, your deck to hedge against it. Um, okay, they can still eight eight Merktide if I hurt. No, it's seven seven Merktide. Okay, I'll hurst them. Um, 
And then also like for the mono green deck, if I get Stony Silence, Collector Oof, you have and Karn, you have some answers for these cards, but there's like just not a good, there's just like not a good way to hedge against Karn in that deck. You could race Karn decks and just combo off before they resolve Karn, and you're gonna lose when you don't uh, get it. But um, it, it, and if, if that's not a good enough explanation, which it might not be a good enough explanation, it, it all boils down to every single deck building decision needs to be does playing this card increase my overall win percentage when compared to playing another card and with the examples of bank company and the dice factory deck if you were going to um if you were going to warp the deck by just devoting a lot of cyborg cards for hushbringer or torpor orb or card of the great creator respectively those decisions are not those deck building decisions are not going to i think meaningfully uh, increase your overall win percentage, so I don't like to make those deck building decisions. A copy or two of Force of Vigor. The thing about Force of Vigor is it only answers Stony Silence, which is a deck that only, which is a deck that only Reanimator plays. Stony Silence is incredibly, incredibly uncommon. It doesn't answer Karn. Doesn't answer Oof. You know what I mean? I think there's a little Jiminy good deck to play Snap. Snapcaster's been seeing tons of play in control decks lately. It's been very good there. That's supposed to be thinking Prismatic on the side. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the thing is, like, Torp Orb is mo almost exclusively see us play out of, the, out of Karn the Great Creator decks. And when Karn the Great Creator decks have access to that much mana and they get the Torp Orb, you're likely losing that game anyways. And you don't want to bring Prismatic Ending again in against Tron. I mean, it, maybe it's, it's not terrible against Tron, right? But I, it's not really a card you love to have in, in those matchups. So it's, it's okay against Titan 2. But um, like like Hammer Time sometimes plays one Hushbringer in the sideboard, and you have a really good matchup against Hammer Time. Besides the sometimes one of Hushbringer, and in that matchup, I'm just like kind of comfortable beating them when they don't draw it and losing to it a lot of the time when they draw it. But you can, um, but you can still beat that card uh, if you like block with Ice Fang sometimes. That's just parents entering the house like a thunderstorm. Oh, so I've got to hearse them. It's kind of focused on winning this fight and listen to Esther's mom being around. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and upkeep both them. Will they come on stream? No. <laughs> They got it. They they brought um they brought one of their dogs to to meet uh, Lucy. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, three and one. Okay, up against a Kahira deck. Why would Shura be better than dive down or similar stuff? I'm I'm pretty I'm I'm honestly like really surprised. Hold on. I'm really surprised we've gotten this question so many times. How, why is Shore Up better than Dive Down? Like, I feel like it's very easy to read both cards, or it should be, and like see that plus one, plus one, untap is better than plus O, plus three. Um, and where like the, the plus O, plus three, when you're giving Hexproof particularly, doesn't matter as much. Um, and so, and so, like I think, so I think that like that, that's a question that surprises me. I do think that um, I or slip up the back, which puts a counter on. Yeah, sure, we could put that in the conversation. The difference between shore up and those cards is you can untap your creature and block your opponent's creature. That's the difference, um, and I think that's a big difference and a really important, impactful one. That being said, that being said, it's not just it. It's very important to note that I'm not of the opinion that. This card, Shore Up, is by itself making this kind of effect desirable or playable in Murktide. I've said this a lot the stream, but this kind of one mana protection spell, in my opinion, is is just is just powerful on its own and give, makes you lets you head against, hedge against one of the cards you're weakest to as Murktide, which is Solitude. It uh, gives you a lot of other utility and application. Is a very flexible combat trick, which is not very common for a combat trick to be super flexible like this. And um, it's just kind of the combination of all these things that makes me interested in trying it. If that makes sense, it is a it is like a techie flex spot card that you can surprise some opponents with. But I I do think it does a lot in the list. 
A lot of people could be tuning in to seeing previous discussion why Sharp over Dive Down. Yeah, I, I guess so, but I just don't I don't know why anybody would think Dive Down is better than Shore Up. And like this is part of the reason why I'm wanting to test it is because because Shore Up is like the best version of this card we have ever seen. <laughs> With the, like the ability like for in blue at least, in blue. And the ability to untap is just it's just huge, letting it sometimes function as a removal spell. And it also buffs power, which is really rare in blue. Um, and so, like, let's your channeler or beat your opponent's channeler in combat. Let's your Merc Tide beat your opponent's Merc Tide in combat. So it's just and and just like that just seems to me so much more relevant than three toughness. Have I thought about Sarah Paragon and Fiddlebender? Um, Sarah Paragon is a card I plan on looking at a little bit deeper at some point. Oh man, Shore Up would be so sick. <laughs> um, but I haven't I haven't looked that deeply at it yet, to be honest. Let's uh, let's lightning bolt their Ragavan. I don't want to lose the treasure before iteration here. I think it's less why Shore better more this type of card wasn't seen play before. What's the difference between Shore? Yeah, I think I think that's the case, but I will say, you know, that, that is, it's not how people are phrasing the question, <laughs> but I, I do think that's what people are as actually asking. Why are you playing this effect? But I think this effect is really, very good. Uh, Counterspell is pretty desirable here, but if I miss on the land, it's just so bad to keep that on top. And I, I was going to miss on the land. Although I will hand the Counterspell bottom, exile Mistress Bobble, cast Mistress Bobble, try to find a land on top, consider into the land, then maybe play Ragavan if it's a red source, and maybe not to not overcommit into Verdict. Okay, still think I consider I get I get you know several more looks here or two more looks three more looks. I I, I actually like have no idea how many looks at a land that was that we missed on. I know I, so I I binned this Odawara thinking we would easily be able to find another land, surveil with the lightning bolt, draw step, <laughs> draw step iteration surveil three looks off iteration, um, bobble surveil. Uh, consider surveil, consider surveil, consider draw. Ten, ten looks. Rough. I did graveyard one, but I thought with you know all those looks we'd find another land very easily. Oh. Should have should have tried to get eleven looks, I guess. Opponents missed their land drop here also. So I, I feel like playing a threat here makes sense. Since obviously they could go land verdict, but we're still not that behind. And if they're missing land drops, they're less likely to do that. Boxing Shadows, think of the three months. Appreciate you. In fairness, dive down wins those same combats, but also lets your Ragavan win combat too. Yeah, that that is that is a reason. That is a reason for sure. I don't think it's like that big of a reason, but that is like an upside dive down has over um, over shore up. Oh baby. <laughs> oh baby. Bant reclamation, huh? For the four one. I obviously want to find a counter spell. We're very, very likely to find a land in four looks. I know we've been missing, but I don't think we're supposed to let that um scare us away from taking like what seems to be the objectively correct line here. Didn't Bobble show Spire Bluff Canal? I, I don't believe it did. I do see a Spire Bluff Canal in the revealed zone. Maybe I'm misremembering, but if I if I saw it and I could have considered into it or something, then I that was my intention. I think four color rhinos would be easy to pick up competitive. I do think so, yeah. I don't think that rhinos is one of the more complicated decks in modern to play at all. Okay, I wasn't sure if they're playing Verdict, but I guess now I am. Do I want to bolt them now? Hmm. Probably fine to wait. Yeah, let's go Dash Ragavan into Merktide and counter spell up. I don't want to cast that and put the Delusion in their yard, although I wouldn't mind two cards, huh? Doesn't seem as good as just doing this. I guess I probably should have just made this a 7-7. Seven, seven. 
doubt it matters a ton. My graveyard's pretty full. So they've used only one Supreme Verdict so far. I imagine their answers to Murktide are some combination of Verdict to Fairy Solitude. Not sure exactly what their build looks like. I think this is a easy counter, but they could counter back and start to pull ahead. They do counter back. They only have two cards in their hand though, so we'll see, see how well they'll be able to capitalize. Second bobble did reveal canal. First one was considered. Well, did I have the ability to draw into the canal? Because if so, I like I obviously should have, you know. Okay, so let's go. Ooh. I guess I go shredder bolt. They have one card in their hand. Does seem like it's correct to discard the Shore Up customer tide. I mean, this is also like part of the reason why, you know, any deck with Ledger Shredder has a, uh, or any like kind of techy situational cards does have up, pretty big upside in a deck with Ledger Shredder where if it's bad, a decent percent of the time you can just dump it. Opponent does only have one card in the hand, drawing seconds, hopefully no verdict. Which of the monorail artifacts do you think is the best positioned? Um, I don't know. Like I wrote, so I wrote. I, I'm assuming maybe you read that article. If you're asking that question, I uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Because the metagame is changing. You know, new cards are being printed and stuff. Yeah, I know the camera's not on my face. It doesn't have to be all the time, huh? Okay, their hand is Nexus of Fate and another spell. I guess I get to connive, huh? Dude, their hand was Nexus Memory Deluge? Gross. Actually disgusting. Pack one, pick one, Soul Ring or Lotus. Uh, I mean, Soul Ring is like the better card, but I really like to I, I, I really like to draft Black Lotus decks. I, I tend to like to just force combo decks in, in cube. All right, deck tech for Chump. If you want to post the list in the chat, I can take a look. My opponent put, is putting Kahira in their hand. Which, I, I don't know what that means, because if they had Solitude, it's just easy to hardcast Solitude, and I imagine like they would be interested in like flashing back Memory Deluge more than they would be interested in Kahira in hand. Maybe I just forgot about the flashback. Awesome fisticuff, glad to hear it. Okay, pending the shredder. Discard monkey. We've done a, a bunch of deck techs for these uh, teamer slogurk decks. Um, I have definitely formed a few opinions on them. One of the, I think that Bloodbraid Elf is pretty mediocre, pretty bad. I I, I think it's not the worst card you could ever play, but it, it is not a card that I think uh, tends to perform super well for me. I wish I could have held the short wrap up, but it was one mana short. Ooh. Maybe just find another bolt off the iteration. <laughs> no. Uh, I even play four bolts main, only three heats. Um... Yeah, I, I tend to not like Bloodbraid Elf very much. One thing I wanted to do the next time I played this archetype was play um, no Bloodbraid Elf, no Tarmogoyf, and play Ledger Shredder and Dragon Rage's Channeler and Mishra's Bobble, which makes your iterations a bit better too. And, and Shredder and DRC can fill up the graveyard <coughs> full of lands for you to take advantage of with your Slowgurks and your Renin Sixes. I think I'd also recommend cutting the... Tireless Trackers and the Fury and the second main deck Besage you to make room for those and the fourth iteration. Although it's also maybe fine to it's also maybe fine to not play three loam. Three loam is kind of a lot. You could maybe just play two. Although loam is really good with Shredder too. Loam is like kind of sick with Shredder. Uh, I think the two Furies are fine. They could also be flex spots. You could play some amount of permission, some amount of like main deck spell pierce could be fine. 
Um, but that's what I wanted to do in the shell the next time I looked at it. Uh, I really don't like playing boil in a deck with islands. You only have two islands, but two boils seems like a lot. You could maybe play one. I probably would play zero. I think I'd be interested in um, more cyber cards for the living end matchup. So like Flusterstorm see, seems like a pretty impactful card for you to have access to. Graveyard this. <sighs> These top decks on. Okay, we can scoop to that. Being able to gain life. Maybe a little early, but <laughs> did not feel like we were winning that game. So I'm going to bring in all the one minute counter spells. They are a solitude deck. They're also playing Verdict, so the shore ups are kind of awkward. I feel like uh, I usually like Hearse against the Verdict deck somewhat, and this also can exile there. They lose is. I feel like one copy is probably fine. Could play a couple of Lightning Bolts to kill Sharks, maybe help against Wandering Emperor. Although he can also help answer to Furies. Let's try this. I think I'll play just two shore up. I think Impulse replaced Deluge. I think Impulse is going to see almost no play in Modern and almost no play in Pioneer. More play in Pioneer, probably. Yeah, I think, I think on the sideboard I want to see, like... Like, Fury is, like, good against Hammer Time Yawgmoth, but I would really like to see, like, Third Grudge, no Boils, three Flusterstorm... Maybe no hearse. Hearse and endurance is kind of a lot. Could be a good way to make room. Cut the ghost quarter. Yeah, cutting the ghost quarter is probably good. I, I, I maybe, I, maybe I want to see more besages in the sideboard. You could do something like one besage you main, three besage you side, no ancient grudge, and that helps your, your Tron and Titan matchups too, which is usually kind of rough. I think that's probably what I recommend actually. I've done that a few times. I think I agree with cutting the, the Ghost Quarter. A second Forgotten Cave probably goes a long way. I like that card a lot for the most part. Do I like Draft? Yeah, I like to Draft. I might be drafting tonight. We'll see. What do you think about Sprouting Goblin? I'll have to read it. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Druid, Cricker Green, Search Library for a Basic, Second Land Draw card. I mean, that card's just not, like, 460 card formats in Modern, I think. It's like, you know, Wood Elves has seen very fringe play in Valakit. You could, you could maybe play this <laughs> over Wood Elves. I mean, the Land Ender's untapped with Wood Elves, at least. Oh, I didn't realize I could get a Triome. I'm soaking Wood Elves, but it's a 2-2, two -two, has extra text. Maybe, maybe it's better than I uh, evaluated that, you know. I think I like actually discarding the Ragavan here, where... The hearse, the hearse is something I always really like to deploy in these spots where, or against the against the supreme verdict decks, where you can um, just just get it growing and then put a pressure on them with one creature, and then like eventually force them to verdict your one creature. Then you can untap and just smack them with the hearse. Obviously, they have some answers to this, but if next turn I get to go like consider into hearse, I'm gonna be pretty happy. Hearse into consider. Uh, also good to know that my opponent has the Nexus of Fate in their hand. Um, good that we drew it. Er good that they drew it early, of course, and not too too scary. So let me let me actually hearse before playing Consider, so I I know if this is resolving before I choose what to get off the what, how to connive or how what to surveil with the the Consider. It is not resolving. Consider. Yeah, I, th I think I'm still discarding Ragavan. Not that Ragavan's terrible here, but I think Grave Riding Murktide. Although I would have maybe liked to discard Mur discard Murktide, keep Ragavan, draw Murktide to find perfect info. But I, I'm getting I'm going to be kind of content to just like pressure them with just the Ledger Shredder, um, force them to answer it, only to play one creature at a time against the Verdict deck. 
have counter spells up, be cantripping with iteration, and try to exploit my generally lower mana curve here. Yeah, I saw the Golgari Depths uh, win the No Banless Tournament. The player that won beat me in the quarters. Oh, thank you for the Phoenix list. Hmm. This the the Dimulich disrespect, huh? And playing Thrill of Possibility over uh, Salvaging it seems so bad to me, too. Creeping Chill is interesting. Salvaging is so nuts, it's a zero mana spell for your phoenixes. It's an, inter an interesting build for sure though. Very all in. Oh wow. Yeah, I mean, I don't usually like iteration in phoenix decks very much because when you are, hold on, hold on. Do I want an iteration here ever? Probably not. Just go Merc Tide and Counter Magic up. Uh, when you are... Uh, when you are playing Phoenix uh, on turn three, you are wanting to, instead of playing iteration and very likely only casting two spells, you, you really want to be able to cast three spells on turn three to bring your Phoenixes back. Although calling this list Grixis is kind of like... <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just creeping chill is the only black card, and the, the, I, I can't believe Thrill of Discovery here is the only discard outlet in the Phoenix deck. Like this, so this is very much just trying to mill over your Phoenixes instead, I suppose. Okay, put a bias Kahira. Solitude, Chalice on one. I guess I could have tried to expect that. Thankfully my hand uh, is completely resilient to Chalice, at least at the time of making this comment. I think that it's gonna be very difficult to play around a verdict this game, however, so I, I think I'm not going to. So I smack my opponent for six down to nine, and then... Yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll, th discarding iteration here feels really bad, but in the name of trying to win the game next turn, I think it's what we're gonna do. Another chalice on top. The pilot said he didn't really like the deck. Okay, I mean that, that's I, I love to hear that too. The thief, uh, <laughs> the thief. Um, Always kind of makes fun of people like ah, you're like I, <laughs> I've broken it. I've <laughs> top aided a challenge. I've five out a league. I've, I've broken it. This is the truth. This deck is the truth, because I've run well with it for a little bit. Um, which is always just kind of poking fun at it. But I, I always like p players who are like gonna like top sixteen a challenge, top eight a challenge, five out a league, and be like this deck is garbage. <laughs> I, it always like levels up my like opinion of their evaluation, you know. Always feels good to cast a one mana spell through a chalice. <laughs> I don't know what what the barking is about. Probably fine, right? Got to be fine. Okay, going to game three. Going to game three. Shorb is doubly good against Wandering Emperor because it also untaps the <laughs> untaps the creature. Okay, let's click submit. Going to game three. I do. I do think like the like Turbo Murktide Regents. Murktide Regent Creeping Chill is pretty interesting. Maximize Velocity Merc Tide's interesting. It's a cool deck. I 
Uh, nobody. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that Oswald uh, top top four of the challenge yesterday. I'll take a look if someone wants to to post it. Got a lot to do tonight. Gets bans reclamation. It's hard for me to mulligan a turn one Ragavan hand. We also have a scry in turn one to try to mitigate a mana flood. More lands is also not the worst thing ever in this matchup. How's the thing getting along? They're getting along really well. Um, my parent or Esther's parents brought um, one of their dogs, so I is he necessary for Chalice? I think you can just try to counter Chalice in this matchup at least. Um, but yeah, the, Esther's parents brought one of their dogs over, so I imagine that's why. There's barking happening. Ruff, 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 ruff. Okay, Bray is apprentice. Crackdown construct. I love. I love to see the crackdown construct. Wait, no way. Hold on. This list is super close to the last Oswald list I played. I'll see if I can find it on the other monitor, but this, this list is super close to the Oswald list I played. I think it's a little different. Could play Shredder with the speed up. I think I'm gonna hold up the charm. Oh, well, they did Mola 5, so they only have three cards in their hand. Um, I think I'm gonna counter their Archmage's Charm with my Archmage's Charm. It's kind of weird. I really don't want them to get the velocity though. You don't see, I don't... Let me just look one more spot for it. Hold on, Boros. Yeah, here we go. Boros, Yorian, Fiddlebender. So compared to the challenge list, I think I think they weren't playing Ragavan. They were playing Ragavan, okay. So I was playing Dispatch. I was playing four Dispatch. They were playing two Galvanic Blast, which is an interesting change. Uh, I wasn't playing Rabbit Battery. This list was also maybe, I maybe made this before Rabbit Battery. No, I didn't because Synthesizer's here. And it seems like they've maybe cut the Synthesizer. This was kind of like my, it was like an engineer target. I think it's good. To, I think cutting it for battery makes sense. I like that change. Uh, they were, they're up a land. I was at 30. I was testing out Halo Fountain as like a way to go like Fiddlebender 2-drop, untap that 2-drop, uh, untap Fiddlebender with Halo Fountain into Crackdown Construct. And they seem to be playing Bray's Apprentice instead. And then the sideboard is different. They're playing like Teferi over Magus, and they're also playing Cathar Commando, which is kind of weird. But oh, there, yeah, yeah. I also have the, I have the Thopter Foundry combo, which is like pretty free with Fiddlebender, Stoneforge, Goblin Engineer. Yeah, but but very 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 close. This is this is a very old list too. This is like six months old, something like that. Oh, dude, they have Teferi. Crazy to see it just kind of pop up this much later. Obviously, they've made a lot, of, you know, like 10, 15 cards different. War Charm over the Dispute. This, this way I can go like next turn Ledger Shredder Dispute um, with the most mana efficiency. Uh, amazing draw. So we can go Shredder, heat this, and have the option to discard Murktai for Delirium or maybe something else if we find it. Uh, yeah, I'll discard the Shredder. Can I show you... Can you please show Oswald EDH? <laughs> that's, that's modern. <laughs> that's modern. Yeah, only two of these in the deck, too. Crazy top deck. They have two cards in their hand. They have a missing land drop, so four mana spells, definitely possible. Specifically, Supreme Verdict. That being said, uh, just slamming this Murktide region is very appealing, especially when I just have Ragavan, like to rebuild if they do go land verdict next turn. <laughs> I could play my own Wilderness Reclamation. I probably not best to. <laughs> I don't know. It's not the worst either. I. It's it's just gotta be better to Shredder here or Shred Murktide here. <laughs> 
can maybe grow the shredder. It would be very fun to cast it, uh, for sure. If I had, like, cards in my hand, you know. Jigger Relic is probably the best Graveyard Hate card in Modern. I, 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 I would say far from it. I would say Rest in Peace, Leyline of the Void, Unlicensed Hearse are all, like, <laughs> are all very often better. Sanctifier and Vac sometimes. Oh, what a draw. Endurance, yeah, Endurance. Great, great graveyard hate spell. Sure wish I had Wilderness Reclamation in play. <laughs> so many Archmage's Charms. All three of them have been countered. So now if my opponent, my opponent, uh, oh, this is my draw step. My opponent uh, loses if they go land verdict, which is a really good place for me to be in, because that's like <laughs> about as best as they can hope for. It's a really good draw, actually. It's kind of a draw too, because I can loot away the tarn. All right, counterspell is gotta be like about as good as a win. Hold this for connive, I guess, but hard to imagine that. There's a combination of cards that gets out of this for my opponent. All right, four and one this league, losing to Breach. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed that we didn't like draw or cash shore up that often. I, I we, we had I think some pretty productive conversations about the card and like my opinion on it as like an interesting techie. Well, I have this. I have this since I opened this top at IRL, but my opinion on it as like an interesting, like techie option for Murktide, I would encourage you to try it out if you think it's interesting. I think I'm like not super likely to spend like much more time playtesting it on stream. Um, it is just like a pretty narrow techie card, but I wanted to play like at least one.